Monza, the aftermath. What a exciting, exhilarating race, but one that had wonderment and all the fans and internet going wild over what the heck McLaren was doing. But if we take that aside, we look at Charles Leclerc. Fabulous, 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 fabulous. And to celebrate the Tavosi's big win, I'm wearing my Ferrari gear. And when you think of Monza, it's always one of those races. There's three races like that. It's Monza, it's Silverstone, and I would say it's Brazil. There's always something fabulous and exciting that's going to happen. Stay tuned as Paul from America F1 and Scott from Experience XO as we dissect, dilute, and go all over what was a great race at the Monza Grand Prix. Yeah, America F1. America F1. It's a golden ride. America F1. <laughs> Paul, hi. How you doing, buddy? I love that tune now. <laughs> it's it's so catchy. It's <laughs> yeah, so catchy. it's our tune. <laughs> Tell me about this Monza experience and what is Charles Leclerc on top of the world? Uh, it's amazing. I mean, he did it in 2019, and to take it and do what they did, Ferrari finally turning themselves around for a strategy, uh, picking up where others just just missed out they just nobody realized he was going to slide into home base like that and he controlled his race and he drove beautifully and to be able to stand on that podium bimmer oh. <laughs> he just was it was in his element i actually got up i took a photograph of the tv of just the entire tofosi lined all the way down the you know down the street it was incredible and i don't care whether you're a mclaren fan a red bull fan a mercedes fan nobody was unhappy for charles's win at monza i was it was brilliant it was brilliant and scott both of us being at Monza last year and seeing all the Tifosi, it's just such an experience. Take us through what we're looking at right here. Like, how is this when you're there in person with all of these fans? All it's electrifying. I mean, there is nothing in F1. I, you know, we go to race, my wife and I go to race all over the world. There is nothing in F1. There is no fan experience like watching Ferrari make the podium, let alone win. In Monza, there are two religions in Italy, the Catholic Church and Ferrari. And for Ferrari to win in Monza, you get tens of thousands of tifosi dressed in red, flooding the track, carrying flags that are several hundred feet long, and they coordinate. You, you have you know, hundreds of people carrying these flags, running down the track, to get in front of the podium and you have red smoke going off everywhere red flags as far as the eye can see red as far as the eye can see there is no experience in f1 quite like watching the tifosi he go wild when ferrari makes the podium uh it is very special doesn't matter who you root for um it is very special and uh charles made ferrari the tifosi and all of italy proud because he did something that's happened twice this year more experienced drivers manage their tires better than the very quick, but less experienced McLaren drivers. They are quick, but Lewis did the same thing to them in Silverstone that Charles did in Monza, and that is made bad tires, older tires last longer than McLaren did. He got on top of that podium and beat what is now the best car in F1. Do you, do you, did you notice one thing? Every time we see the Tifosi, when they hold those big, big, big flags, those 700 foot wide flags, yep. nobody jostles the people holding those flags. Oh, there no. is everybody stays, it takes, stays taught, nope. and nobody sort of gets in a fight or gets under the flag, or it just it's amazing that. how they just like all it's, it's, I don't know, it's like one of those un, unpracticed things, but it's like it's holy, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's sacral 
sacrilegious or whatever, no one touches it and everybody keeps it taut. And there was two of them. You could see two of them very yeah. clearly in the crowd this time. You know, Oscar is a great starter. Great starter. He's ruthless. He has a killer instinct. Um, he is not the best tire manager and sometimes his race pace suffers as a result. Uh, Lando uh, is a horrible, horrid starter. Seven pole positions where he's not been in the lead. Not at the end of the race, but at the end of the first lap, um, which is disgraceful. I mean, I, look, I love Lando, but you he's got to fix that um, yeah. because he digs himself a hole. But, I will. but they are sort of opposites because Oscar does tend to get in trouble as the race goes on because he goes out very hard. And it's absolutely true as a driver. One of the things you learn is if you on a slick tire, if you beat the heck out of it right away, it's going to go away from you right quick. They say in like Texas, it's going to, it's going to go away. You can't do that. And that is why, like I said, Lewis and Charles have beaten McLaren with slower cars. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk about what happened with McLaren and Oscar and Lando. I mean, I, uh, at absolutely no level should Oscar have attacked Lando. Um, the team, should have known to keep the order. Uh, Lando made enough of a, a getaway. It was okay. I mean, he, you know, Oscar didn't get near him until lap four. He, I believe that Lando genuinely thought that at this stage, Oscar is now taking up the rear gunner for me. Uh, and the four? next, yeah, yeah, turn four. Uh, uh, sorry, turn four. And uh, I, I believe in my heart of hearts that Lando thought that Oscar was his rear gunner, that he was going to protect him. And he didn't. He went for it and he nearly caused a crash that, you know, Lando admittedly said, look, if I'd have known he was going to do this, I would have braked later. Uh, I would have squeezed him a bit so he would have known, you know, here you go, slap, <laughs> stay away. Uh, but he didn't. And he challenged him. And I think it was a disgrace that the team allowed it. Uh, but um, it shows that there is a lack of orders at the team. There's a lack of something. Um, and, you know, I, I say, I'll, I'll say it for you guys. Uh, you know, Verstappen is on 303 points. Uh, uh, Norris is on 241. Uh, Leclerc is on 217. But more importantly, Oscar is on 197. So he's 50 points adrift, pretty much, of, of Norris. And what the hell was McLaren doing allowing Oscar to risk the race and risk the, the cars both cars uh it was just wrong from every angle and as team owner team manager i'd be bloody furious and zach should have stepped in and made sure from the start of that race that did not happen unless lando screwed the start but she didn't you know one thing that you said was interesting and you said that uh, lando did not expect oscar to be there well while he's driving down there he saw oscar right there what he could have done is what Lewis would have done, would just push him out a little wider. And because he had the inside, he was on the inside, Oscar was on the outside. He could have pushed him out a little bit, and Oscar probably would have lost a place. Maybe he'd have got he'd have gone back to third or fourth, but he, in race pace, he would have made it up. But sometimes I think Oscar doesn't have that little ruthlessness in him, you know, like if you're trying to win a championship, you gotta be ruthless. I mean, remember when uh, Hamilton ran um, uh, his, his, his buddy Rosberg. Rosberg wide in Austin, and uh, Rosberg was on pole, and Hamilton was second. When they come up on that big, they come up that big hill, and they take that big uh, sweeping left. left turn, and mm -hmm. Hamilton rode him right out off the track because he's like, "I'm trying to win a championship. I don't care if it's my teammate. I don't care if it's my brother, my sister, my mother." Annie May, I'm gonna win. Yeah, uh, you you said uh, you said Oscar, and uh, I think you misplaced what you meant. It was the killer instinct in Lando, is what you Correct. mean. Lando should have run Oscar off. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know that that's what he should have done, but he didn't know he was going to be attacked. He genuinely did. Go ahead, Oscar sir. is a racing driver, and a racing driver is trained from the time when they are a child in karting. They, their, their mission is to win the race yep. is to take if there's a gap as santa said if you're not going for a gap you're no longer a racing driver and i'm sorry but if there are no longer team orders if there are no team orders lando is a fool if he doesn't think someone like oscar piastri is going to go for that gap not oscar's fault the team's fault the team oh, is yeah. losers 
yep. championship winning teams implement team orders when it becomes patently clear that <laughs> one driver is in a position to win or challenge for the World Drivers Championship and the other is not. Well, who is that? Oh, let's see. Red Bull with Max Verstappen. Ferrari with Michael Schumacher. Mercedes with Lewis Hamilton. These are no. not exactly schmucks. These are the Smashing greatest metal. drivers, the greatest teams in the modern history of Formula One. If McLaren wants to be champion, it needs to start acting like a champion and stop acting like a midfield team. And that is what McLaren is acting like. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, 100%. They haven't won in so long. And I don't know what. They haven't won in so long. Maybe they don't really know how to win, and they don't know they don't have that ruthlessness in them that says, "Well, you know, Lando has out qualified Oscar for like fourteen to two or something really? crazy like that." And mm -hmm. in race pace, he has more points, so you should be at this point of the season. There comes a time, and I think it should have happened a couple races ago. I would have never, if I was in Lando's spot, I'd have never gave that back. I was ahead. I got. I got the lead. I did the undercut. Oh, well, life is rough. I'm winning that race. You think Vettel would have gave that place back? You think Lewis would have gave that place back? Multi-21. Multi-21, Multi-21. He knew. He knew what was going on. He just ignored him. He just ignored him. He's like, I'm winning this race. And if he didn't do that that season, he might have lost. Remember, that season was really close. If Seb didn't do that, even though it was multi-21 and they had team rules, if he didn't do and he wasn't ruthless, he might have lost that championship. Listen, you have to do that. Yeah. All credit to Oscar. I'm not blaming Oscar for what happened. No. It, it was done. McLaren, Sunday morning. The let's sit around the table and talk about this papaya rules, boys. Preposterous, preposterous rules. Papaya. <laughs> Sorry, I nicked your line, but That's yeah, okay. preposterous rules. You know, come on now, uh, Oscar. If Lu if Lando is ahead of you off the start line, you are the gunner. You're the rear gunner. Stay there. And that's it. And uh, they didn't. They don't have the balls. Zach, I'm so surprised at Zach for not implementing and telling them. Or 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 oh, what's his name? I have a question the, for the you. Manager. Paul, I have a question for you. Do you think it's Zach? Or do you think it's the team principal? Because Zach is the CEO. It seems like he just sits there and he just kind of lets lets the principal do his job. It doesn't seem Andreas, like Yeah. Andre it's Andreas really Stella. Andreas Stella is the printing principal. And I don't know, Scott, I, yeah. I'm sorry, but if I'm sitting around that table and I know that this is all about the points and it's not just about uh, teams are not that selfish that they don't think about the driver winning their championship. And you see those points, Verstappen on 303, Norris on 241, eight races to go or nine races to go from Sunday. You just tell, look, whoever's in front, fecking stays in front and you support the other guy. I have it on pretty good authority from an insider at McLaren uh, who I heard from this uh, the last week or two that the reason that they weren't implementing team orders is that they thought Max had a P2 car. And therefore, Lando wouldn't be able to close the gap. So they didn't want to alienate Oscar, um, who they're probably concerned might be poached one day by Red Bull or somebody. Um, but when you, let's fast forward to Monza. Max qualifies, what, seventh? Seventh. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a gaping yeah. wound. Max you knew Saturday night. Blood. You, you knew. knew Saturday night. You Come Sunday morning for that pre-race, you had that discussion. This is Sorry. not a time to drive the knife in. I, okay, I get it. If it was P1 versus P2, Max keeps the championship. But now you've got a car that has fallen off a cliff. There's no more Adrian Newey to bail them out. Right. They've got a bunch of subordinates, just like Dan Fallows at Aston Martin, who do not know what they're doing with the Adrian right. Newey design. They don't know how to upgrade it because Newey is gone. And the car is going and he, off. The cliff. And he took that USB key with him. And that's when you drive <laughs> all the, the info. And that's when you drive the knife in. You know the car is no good yeah. anymore. You know, you know Checo's complaining that, you know, hey, or he's saying, acknowledging that see, Max now sees what I see. You know right. the car is bad. You have a huge opportunity to really drastically shrink Max's lead, and you don't take it. And you don't tell, you know, Oscar, look. You're gonna you're gonna be the rear gunner. 
Your time is going to come. We let you win Hungary. We right. made Lando give back the position by telling him that we were yes. going to be, we were going to have his back when he needed it. Well, guess what? That time came at Monza and they left Lando in the cold. They yeah. lied to him in Absolutely. Hungary. Absolutely. And, and let's, let's not forget how much Oscar is worth, by the way. Oscar is worth probably six million. He probably got to be there to race for McLaren, but he didn't. It was 16 million because they had to pay off Danny to go to hell. It was 10 million. They had to pay off the rest of that contract. So they paid a lot of money for Oscar to be in that seat. And maybe he's just proving some points. Maybe psychologically, whilst he's not a better driver than Lando yet, psychologically, he's stronger. He's stronger than Lando in mentally, mentally? you know. He's yeah. much tougher than Lando. Yeah. Yeah. All he needs is a little bit more tire management racecraft, and I think he is going to leave Lando. Time. You Just know, time. One, one interesting time. thing that people are bringing up is that Mark Webber is Oscar Piastri's manager. That's right. And then we all know that the problems that he had with Sebastian Vettel, and maybe he put, and they're saying that maybe he put in their contract or an Oscar's contract that he is treated as an equal number one driver. But there comes a point in the season where one guy's ahead and he has a chance of winning the championship. The other driver is behind and he doesn't have a chance. Mathematically, he's still okay. in the race, but let's be honest, he's he's not he's not going to win the championship. Oscar's not no, going to win the championship. Not this year. So since Lando is ahead in qualifying, since Lando is ahead in points, since it's obvious Lando is ahead in race pace, I do think Lando at this point right now is a better driver than Oscar. Oscar has the potential to be a better driver, but Lando is the guy right now as we speak today. Why aren't they supporting this man like he can win the championship? I think, the I think from the next race we will see that if it comes yes. around again that it's one two for quali with mclaren and lando gets away cleanly please god uh, i think you will see oscar as a rear gunner i don't think you'll see him as the front but if oscar is on pole then the situation may change can i just say by the way guys uh let's just recap on something here Verstappen is on 303 points norris is on 241 leclerc God love him. He's in 217. We know it's not going to happen, okay? Not and happen. Oscar is on 197. So he is uh, 105 points, 106 yeah, points behind. Happen. He's 106 points that behind huge. Red Bull, right? Behind Verstappen. It's not. I mean, if I'm the betting guy, the last guy at the track with my $3 left in my pocket and I want to go for a long shot, you could still put your money on Oscar at, you know, 60 to 1 that he could right. win the championship. And we're, we're nodding our heads no, but if we'd have done this three races in at the beginning of the, uh, at the, beginning of the season, we would never have believed we would have eight different, well, not eight different winners, but we would have eight different wins. You know, uh, we all look. It all looked like Verstappen was going to run with this, and now we've had three from three from Ferrari, three from Mercedes, uh, and we've had three from. Is that right? Three yeah, from and McLaren, three from right? So, I mean, you know, wow, but a lot of different. I mean, this is supposed to be the closest season that we've ever had with the most amount of winners so far. Anyway, not cool. to not to detract. Yeah. Well, remember, 2012 started out with seven different winners in the first seven races. That's right. So let's not That's forget right. that. But when you yeah. look at this picture, Scott, what comes to mind? No. When you see that, <laughs> when you see that picture, what do you think? What's coming to your brain? What does that say? I think that they have a situation where, again, you've got a team like McLaren, that is basically doing what Ferrari did in 2022. They've got the best car and the worst strategy. And they are blowing race after race after race. After. I mean, really, since China, McLaren should have won just about every race except Monaco. Um, because sure. Ferrari specialized to make their Monaco car very strong. Um, but they are doing what Ferrari did, you know, yeah, but true, you know, fastest car, lousy strategy and some immaturity and lack of gravitas and failure to frankly stay ahead on the first lap. These all conspired together, lack of tire management to basically say that it's, it's such a perfect rejoinder to all these people who hate Lewis and hate Max 
and say the only reason they won all these championships is the car was fast. Mm -hmm. And I say as a Formula One fan first, bullshit. A great – any one of these guys in Formula One can take the best car and win two to four races a year. But that's it because they're going to bottle it almost every other race. Only the best can take the best car and win 10, 12, 14 or more races a year because only the greats, only the champions put it together every weekend, bring it every single weekend, race in and race out, top-level performance every race weekend. And you're not seeing that with Lando. And when he said that we were the only one to get a pass, I said, you know what? Shut up, because it's not true. And when people say it about Lewis and Max, it's not true. You may not like either one of them, depending on who you are, but they're both really good drivers. They're great drivers because they bring, they maximize what they've been given. Lando yeah. is minimizing what he's been given, and that is a shame. amazing. Which is Red Bull is on 446 points. And McLaren is on 438 points. Mm -hmm. Ferrari is on 407. These two teams can overhaul Red Bull in the next two to three races. And Mercedes is on 292. I don't think they're going to get close they're to the championship. Happen. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Aston is on 74. What a disappointment of a year for Aston. Red Bull Junior Team, Horrible. 34. When their sister team, the lead team, is 446, that's an embarrassment this year for Red Bull Juniors. And uh, Haas is on 28. Yeah, okay. Gene Haas is just not putting the money in. They then, have basically equal Williams points for all of last season, by the way. Williams at 28. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here. And, and here's the disappointment. So Alpine is 13. Williams is on six, for God's sake. That is terrible. And it's what the hell? Horrible. Sauber, zero. Point. Nil point for Sauber. That's Why it. people are starting to not like Lando is because of the cheeky things that he was saying to Lewis Hamilton in the cool down room when he was talking about that he had the fastest car, iterating that, well, you won these races because you had the fastest car. And now we see that Lando has the fastest car and he's really had the fastest car for 11 races. And out of 11 races, he's only won two races. And you can also say throughout this whole season, if he hasn't had the fastest car, he had the second fastest car to Max mm -hmm. in the beginning of the season. And he still wasn't winning races. Now, Lewis Hamilton has won races with the third fastest car. Max Verstappen pretty much has always had the fastest car. But in his couple years where he didn't have the fastest car, he was winning races with the second and the third fastest car. And he won that championship. I won't get into it because it'll make my blood boil. My hat might <laughs> fly off at the top of my head in 2021, obviously, when they stole it. But he still was in the fight. And half, some races, Lewis had the fastest car. And some races, Max. And we can almost say that both were pretty even that year. And, you know, if it wasn't for Michael Madison, Lewis would have won. But Max still was in the fight. Mm -hmm. Lando Norris is not in this fight. And we can also blame all the things on McLaren, but he has to take responsibility for being such a wussy and letting these things happen. He can't get his first lap down nope. right. He's not aggressive enough. He's being too nice. He's self-deprecating. That does not make the makeup of a champion. If you want my piece on this, I would say we're going to see the two McLarens crash before the end oh, of the season. Oh, I've been waiting for it. I've been waiting. Yeah. I've been we're waiting. going to see them crash because Lando will go, okay, so like Max dealt Lando a blow a couple of races mm -hmm. back, uh, Lando toughened up, and now he's going to go, oh, okay, Oscar, so you think you're going to bring it to me. So now if you're going to bring it to me, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what bring it is, and I think the two of them are going to end up crashing. I don't think it's going to happen. Higher rules be damned. I, I, I think what you're going to see now is you're going to see team orders. I think they're under such tremendous pressure. They've been resoundingly condemned throughout the F1 community by other team principals, and experts, the fans and the press. <laughs> Will Buxton torch them? Oh my God. Um, yeah. Torch them? As Nico as Rosberg. As well. Nico Rosberg. Uh, I think, and I guarantee you, uh, the Bahrainis who own that team yeah. have been burning up Zach Brown's phone about this. 
there are going yeah. to be team orders from here on. So I do not think they're going to crash because I think that Oscar is going to be told this year, you have to be the rear gunner. You didn't score enough points. Next year is a different story, but we need to. Only if, only if Lando team. gets a clean getaway. I don't see, I, let's just say they're one, two on pole and Oscar gets the good getaway and he gets ahead of Lando because Lando has a poor start. Uh, I don't see Land, uh, Oscar pulling over, but because they're still going to win the championship at this rate. I mean, as I say, uh, I don't know if you heard me, Sherman, but Red Bull's on 446, McLaren's on 438. It's a done deal. At this rate, the way the, McLaren, uh, the way the Red Bull is running, it's a done deal that McLaren have every opportunity to win unless Ferrari can truly pull something out of the bag. They're at 407. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I see even if they keep up with this horrible strategy, even if they keep up with the horrible tire management, they'll if they finish second and third consistently, as long as they one driver finishes ahead at Checo, which seems like second it's going to be the tight. case, Pretty and right. then if the other driver occasionally finishes ahead of Max, then they're going to win the championship, no doubt. Yep. Yep. I don't see Max winning a race again this year. And, you know, I, and he's and psychologically, he's, uh, psychologically, he said publicly, I don't think I'm going to win another race this year. Now, that's a big, that's a big story for Max to come out and say that. That's the first time we've seen a bit of a chink in his armor in three yeah. years. I think Singapore, they might have it. That would be their best opportunity in the upcoming races is Singapore, I would say. Singapore's say? next is bogey track. He's always performed like garbage there. It's probably their worst yeah. opportunity. I guess. No, for, for Checo. Oh, for Checo. No. Yeah. That, oh. It's a street race. He usually like goes pretty track. well. There. He likes that track. Yeah, it's good for his touch. He's he's brilliant with the brakes and with acceleration. He's lousy in high Sorry, guys. I'm tired. No, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. He's lousy in high and medium speed corners, but he's very good with the, the touches and the precision you have to do in a street race. Uh, well, so you're right. Let's talk before we end, let's talk about Franco Calapinto. Oh. And let's talk about Kimmy Antonelli. New blood coming into Formula One. They both were in at Monza, Franco coming in to the Williams team for one Logan Sargent, one American racer who sadly didn't live up to. <laughs> he just let, I, I don't know what to say about Logan. Nice kid, nice hair, just not the greatest of drivers. The hair wasn't the hair wasn't uh wind resistant enough. No, you know, no, the wind yeah. Yeah, enough he didn't have any arrow going with the hair. It slowed him down. This is what happened. Now, but <laughs> Franco, who none of us really heard of before. <laughs> before oh. this announcement, nobody really knew no, who it was. But I have I to say up to. he finished well in the race and I have to say he, he made won. the race very well he didn't come out even when he was in practice one practice two practice mm -hmm. three he didn't go like Kimmy Antonelli he didn't go like barn busters right out the gate he no. got yeah. heat into his tires he got into a nice pace and then he started doing fastest laps or his fastest laps near the end of his stint which Kimmy mm -hmm. should have done get used to the car you know, get some heat into my tires. Let's get used to the track. And then, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes into the session. Now let's put burn to the rubber and get some fast laps in. He tried to come out of the gate like a bat out of hell. And he ended up in the barriers. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, Kimmy, was, I mean, well, it was his first time in the car. That's the hilarious part. Cause in formula one, you're just, you're, you're, you're not allowed to you know, take a rookie and put him in the new car. You got to put him in a two-year-old car. Do private testing, but that's not the. And they've done a ton with Kimi Antonelli of private testing in the W13, where he was super quick and you know apparently faster than George in some situations. But it's not the W15, and apparently he went in and it's sort of like if you do Porsche racing or whatever. You if you get in the GT3 RS, the 992, it has 1,800 pounds of downforce. You think you're a king. You think that car is invincible until until you you bin it, um, and I think that's what Kimmy felt. He said, "Oh my God, this car is so much better than W13. I can't believe the downforce. I can't believe the grip. It's infinite until it isn't." And what he did is he went through the Lesmos and he went through the Ascari chicane faster than any other driver in the grid, 
overheated his rear tires. And you know what happens when the tires are outside the performance window, right? They have no grip anymore. Went into Parabolica with two overheated rear tires that have no grip. That was the end. He is super fast. He is daring. He told the Formula One world, I'm going to bring it every time. You better look out. Just like his idol, Max Verstappen, it really is his idol and role model. It's not Lewis, it's Max. Um, and he did what a young Max Verstappen would have done, except Max didn't bin it on his first time in FP1. But he's announced to the world, this is who I am. Um, and, you know, Colapinto was incredibly grateful to have his seat. There was no way he was going to bin that car because he doesn't feel secure in it. And he did what, what I like to do when I go on the track, and that's work up to those fast laps when you go out in a new car. Uh, the thought of, you know, maximum attack, full send right away is anathema to me because I don't want to be in the wall. Uh, and, you know, he, perf he built up the weekend smartly, intelligently, and maturely to the point where he had a great, you know, he gained six positions in the race from P18 to P12, lots of good overtakes. He never really came close to crashing. Um, Williams was thrilled. Pundits were thrilled. He did a great job. Now, you know, is he the next Max Verstappen? I don't know. He was, he didn't set the world on fire in F2, not that, but he certainly was ahead of both Ali Behrman and Kimi Antonelli, but he did a great job for a Williams driver. He was only like 12 seconds behind Alex after a Grand Prix, which is great. Slogan was usually more like 30 seconds to a minute behind. And so uh, what did you see with our new, new blood into Formula One? What did you okay, see? Okay. Well, I thought that, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, Kimi arriving at the scene of the accident one and a half laps in was a terrible shame. I thought that Toto's enthusiasm was amazing yeah. uh, as to how he described it, you know, and he was sort of like, you know, he's 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 going to be the best. He's going to be the best. And we saw so much in that lap and a half. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. Um, I like the fact that Colopinto, I really didn't sort of follow. I, I watched some of the F2 so that we always know who's coming through and what's happening. And I didn't really pay attention to Colofinto, so he was quite the surprise. Everybody thought that um, possibly Schumacher was going to get that F, that Williams drive uh, as a replacement for Logan. He's done. Oh, he is done. There's no question. Unless, unless, unless. Uh, okay, so, um, sorry, just, a, just a, a meme for you, a verbal meme. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, so KMAG, Driving like he doesn't have a career in right. the future. Yeah. Uh, oh, he has a career. Yeah. It's just one. <laughs> exactly. He'll so, be in K, no, but, but K Mag now has a one race ban, 12 points. You're done. One race ban. So, my caption was K Mag driving like he doesn't have an F1 career anymore. And yeah, oh, <laughs> and the, you know, the, the side eyes, like, oh my God, like he really did. He is driving like he doesn't have a future in F1. So, um, with that being said, maybe Schumacher might get a run because we still don't know Bottas, we still don't know Zhao, we still don't know K-Mag. There's like four drivers that still haven't been placed. And I've got a funny feeling that maybe somewhere along these lines, Schumacher's going to get his chance again um, because he's been overlooked now for the Mercedes second seat. He's been overlooked now for the Williams replacement. Uh, what's going to happen to him? Okay. So, <laughs> but Colapinto, I thought he did an educated, safe, nice drive. And he came in 12th, which is brilliant. You know, so yeah. he was 12th, wasn't he? He was 12th. Was 12th. And yeah. I, just, I just don't see Mick getting a seat. I really don't. Because who's going to get the Audi seat? That's what we're waiting for, right? That's Heidfeld. And what well, we thought Carlos Sainz was going to go there, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. The so, press yeah. reports for Valtteri is the favorite to get it. Mm -hmm. that I hope so. That the car is garbage and there's just nothing. Oh. He's, he's destroying Joe. That's not the point. But, mm -hmm. you know, he's destroying him in P19 versus P20. The yeah. two favorites are Valtteri <laughs> number one. And it looks there's still a lot of talk about Gabriel Bordoletto number two, who is certainly, uh, you know, zooming up the F2 ranks and is now threatening to win as a rookie after he won F3 as a rookie. And 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 who's done that in the recent past? Charles yeah. Leclerc, right? right? George Russell, Oscar Piastri, the people who win F2 and F3 as a rookie 
get to Formula One. And if Bortoletto does it, and he's on the verge of doing it because he's a really good driver, uh, he makes. It I nice. know that name. I've I've watched him in quite a few races. He's pretty yeah, good. He's, no. he's, he's yeah, pretty he comes good. through. He's quick. F two F two is. I don't think the uh, those that are that are listening in and watching these videos with us. Um, I don't think they understand if they don't watch F two. Um, F two is amazing. Uh, it's really hard nosed. They're they're much under they're much underpowered compared to the Formula One cars, <clears throat> but they have the DRS. They have so much of the bodywork and so much of the setup that is like a Formula One car, but they're they're underpowered by by comparison. I mean, I think a lap, let's say a, a Formula One lap for one of the tracks could be one minute thirteen. Well, a Formula Two car would be like one twenty eight, something like that. It's I think 10, 12. Yeah, you know, fifteen uh, seconds. The the difference is a lap F1 slow. Is thousand yeah. horsepower. F two is six hundred and twenty <coughs> horsepower. The biggest yeah. difference between the two is the lack of downforce. And actually, right. yeah. Right. Ollie Behrman right. once explained this to me over breakfast in Montreal when we were at the Ritz Carlton together by coincidence. They, they sat him next to me. Yeah. He said the biggest difference is the rear is really loose in F two versus F one. He said F one car gives me tremendous confidence. The F two car doesn't have the downforce and so the rear end is a lot more squirrely um and that's why the lap times are slower because you don't get the confidence okay. it's like if you drive porsche you drive a you know gt3 versus gt3 mm -hmm. rs it's a different world the gt3 yeah. rs has three times the downforce so so just to just to, sorry Trim, just so just to keep the viewers interested in this and maybe the potential that they might look at an f2 race it is very interesting to watch Formula 2 because these are the, potentially the future people that will be in Formula 1. They're being trained exactly the same as Formula 1 drivers are. Um, and they go through the same hell that a Formula 1 driver does, the weight loss, the training, uh, the muscle buildup, etc. Except Formula 1 is just another step up. You've got to have even bigger neck muscles and be able to take the G-forces, which are because your car is so much faster going through the bends. So... To be honest with you, if you do get the chance to catch a Formula 2 race, you should watch it because it's also like the animals have been let loose in the zoo. <laughs> if there's going to be crashes, thrills and spills, it's going to happen in Formula 2 and it's worth a watch. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I think that's a good way to end today's show yep. is when you watch Formula 1 and if you watch it on F1 TV, usually you can they'll have the sister races they'll have the support races that they call them they'll have f2 sometimes they'll have f3 they'll have porsche races they'll have ferrari races and i always it, i watch it at when it's a good crash like if it's at silverstone i watch it if it's at spa i watch it if it's at monaco especially monaco because there's always crashes in f3 <laughs> i mean always it's just cars <laughs> everywhere it's carnage so there's certain tracks <laughs> we have to watch the, F3. Spa yeah. causes uh, crashes in because every the crashes single discipline. At uh, Monza and F3 are just insane. Yeah. And before you, Spa, you know, before you, before you wrap up, Sherman, a couple of what they call parish notices, all right? A couple of a couple of uh, local notices. I don't know if either of you two have been sent the email for Formula One for Las Vegas, but they've now added a Ferrari. You know about this, Sean, mm -hmm. Scott? Yeah, you both know. Yeah. Okay, so for those that don't know anybody that's you thinking about us. going to Las Vegas, you, you tell them, go on, for this, this add-on to Vegas, the, the race, they're adding a free Ferrari Challenger. Ferrari Ferrari Challenger. Or Correct. Yeah. So you'll get 35 Ferrari Challenge cars uh, being driven anywhere. Uh, from, yeah, they're, they're, Ferrari Challenge races are always fun. There's a million crashes. They are faster than the Porsche Super Cup races because they're more powerful um and they're beautiful to look at and they're a lot of fun so yes they finally have a support race well, for vegas they have a support I hope race. In vegas what they do is they have a little corral where you can see the ferraris before they go out like if you go to a formula one race usually the f2 cars and f3 cars are in a different side of the paddock they're either along they have a whole different paddock for usually f2 and f3 and sometimes you get to if you get a ticket for the race, if your ticket doesn't contain a paddock pass where you can go and take a look at the, the F1 cars, it usually will let you go to see the F2 and F3 cars. And usually that's on a Thursday or a Wednesday mm -hmm. or no 
what type of race it is. And I hope at Las Vegas, they have a lot of these support Ferraris just lying around so people can go yeah. up and look at them because they are some fabulously beautiful cars. And on that note, we want you to remember that Doobie Energy Drink gives you more energy. It gives you more focus. So get your Doobie today. Just go to Doobie Energy Drink. That's Doobie Energy Drink and put in the code America F1, M E R I C A F1, to get your discount on Doobie Energy Drink today. And thank you again for another show. Joining us for America F1 with your two co hosts, Sherman Paul, and our always fabulous special guest, Scott. In the next show, we're going to do Scott is over in Europe racing porsche cars and the next show is just going to be a special and we're going to show you all the tricks and ins and outs of scott's exciting and fabulous experience that we all want to do to be able to go and race a porsche car on one of the famous racetracks in the world and scott did it without crashing which is fabulous so so far so far far. so far far. (laughs) racetrack scott we wish you all the best, you and your fabulous hair today. And as always, Paul and his chain smoking and his long uh, races hair. Everybody out there, keep on racing, everybody. See ya. See ya. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing.